A lot of it is just the way he behaves. It's somewhat unpredictable. But some of it, we think, is exploring. You know, what are my options? Where could I go? What could I do? And we would encourage that. That is Secretary of State Hillary Clinton saying she's relaxed about Libya as Muammar Gaddafi may be looking for an exit strategy. Yeah, members of Congress, by the way, not so relaxed. Top Line starts right now. Hello and welcome to ABC News Top Line. I'm Rick Klein. And I'm Amy Walter. Every day at noon Eastern, we're right here bringing you the latest in politics. Always relaxed. It's twitter.com slash rickkline, twitter.com slash Amy E. Walter. Amy, what is your top, top line? It must be the massage chairs that make us so relaxed <laughs> here. All right. Starting off where Hillary Clinton left off, no exit. Obama says the handover is coming this weekend and NATO allies. But... By the way, we're, we're still going to be dropping bombs between now and then. So the real question, of course, is what sort of impact this is going to have on the president. And we still see members of Congress coming out today and saying they want to have some real answers about this when they get back next week. That's right. And we're seeing some, some redefinition by the president about what an exit strategy really right. means. We may actually still be there militarily. We may not be taking the lead. That is a definition that I That's think some members of Congress would be yes. interested in hearing some more. Next up today, it is a big effing birthday. Healthcare turns one today, and if this was a baby, it might still be spitting up, sorry to say. But Mitt Romney, interestingly, sees a chance to differentiate himself. He's got an op-ed out, out today where he says he would, on day one as president of the United States, not that he's considering running or anything, no, of course he would sign a, an executive order that would allow states to opt out, which has some interesting impact. Uh, it could depend on the state whether whether the Obama health care plan would still be in effect. Yes, and really this is all about Mitt Romney making sure that and, and trying to balance this this line here between saying, I really don't like Obamacare, I have to answer for the Romney care, so here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to split the difference and say every state gets its chance <laughs> gets to choose. do something. All right. Next up, showing his cards. All right. Donald Trump, we learned today, will be in Iowa June 10th, kicking off a big event there in the, uh, Republican, for the Republican Party. And he's in New Hampshire the same month. And by the way, here's something, Rick. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, hasn't he said that June is the month that he's going to make up his mind about whether or not he's going to run? Well, we've seen his plane in Iowa we before, have. but not not the not uh, the Donald himself. Now he'll be going there, uh, doing that whole Millie's apple pie thing. But you're right, the timing is interesting. It all coincides around uh, his uh, his television show as well. Really, that's to learn. that's shocking. Finally, today it is Rand or Ron. The word out of Paul Land, such as it is, is that we can expect either the father or the son to run for president. Now, one is well into his 70s, a well-known libertarian congressman. The other has been a senator for. Yeah, five minutes yeah. or so now. Yeah. So it's, it, it'll be, but we'll see those, the, the, you know, we heard Paul 08, we'll hear Paul 12, it appears as well. Two words about the Pauls money bomb. Money those bomb. Those guys know wow. how to raise it on the internet. I actually think that's one word. But we begin oh, today's uh, program talking a little presidential politics. Uh, the former governor of New Hampshire and the former chairman of the New Hampshire Republican Party, John Sununu, uh, joins us here in Washington. And, and Governor, uh, let's just start off because we've seen some of the, the presidential politicking. Who, as of right now, at this extremely early moment, who is the front runner? Who is going to win the New Hampshire primary? I suspect it'll be one of the uh, four governors and former governors that uh, you know have a good track record: Romney, uh, Pawlenty, Haley Barber, or, or Mitch Daniels. And uh, obviously, uh, I think uh, because he was there before, I think Mitch Romney's a uh, Mitt Romney is uh, at the the head of the pack of four. Well, can you weigh in on that for a second, Governor? Obviously, today's the, the one-year anniversary of uh, the health care bill. There's a lot of talk in Republican circles that Romney's position on health care is going to be a real problem for him in the primary. How does the Romney care issue play in New Hampshire? Well, look, uh, everybody who's running in the Republican primary wants to put a burden on everybody else who's running. And, uh, and the candidates that are running have decided that they're going to go after Governor Romney uh, on that issue. But I think the governor has made it clear there's a significant difference between states enacting policies and the federal government enacting policies. And I think he's made it clear with what he did yesterday that he's going to use uh, every power under the executive order uh, to kill Obamacare until he can get legislation that kills it for good. So I, I compliment him for having been that aggressive and, and saying, I'm going to kill Obamacare with uh, uh, executive orders as much as I can until I can get the House and Senate to send me legislation uh, that puts a stake through its heart. 
no doubt trying to send a message there. Now, Governor, you, you mentioned these four former governors. There were a couple other former governors making noises about running. Mike well, Huckabee, former Sarah and current. Palin. Former and current. For, well, former that's right. And current. Well, they, Un understood, but there's two former governors, and uh, you didn't include in that list. Huckabee and Palin stick out in my mind. Michelle Bachman also campaigning in Iowa just this week, and, w and has been spending some time in New Hampshire as well. It, it, does Michelle Bachman have a chance at, at, at becoming the next presidential nominee, or is this just a kind of a sideshow from your perspective? Well, I don't know how, how serious she is about running. I, I know she's traveling a lot, but, uh, you know, there, there are two kinds of people who run for president. If you have a serious chance of running for president and winning, it's the hardest thing you do in the world. If you don't have a serious chance of winning, it's one of the most fun things you can do in the world. So each candidate has to decide for themselves which of those two categories they fall in. Well, does Sarah Palin yeah. fall in the fun category or the hard category? Yes. <laughs> yes. We're for, come on now, you're go governor. Let's let's let's. Look, uh, it's we, up we, to we the candidates to decide. It's up to the <laughs> candidates to decide which, which category they fall in. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, I will say this. It, 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 there's, a, there's a perception out there that people can wait a lot longer this year to announce than in the past. Uh, I don't think that's true. I think, I think with the way communications are today and the way things get put together rather quickly and, and, and people trying to make early commitments of support in places like uh, Iowa and New Hampshire and South Carolina and Nevada, uh, I think the candidates better decide pretty quickly if they're going to run or not, if they want to get some of the significant figures to be involved in their campaigns. Because people are, are, are making their decisions in terms of supporters, even though they may not be announcing them, supporters are making decisions early. Uh, I want to talk about the person who replaced you as chairman did so with support from the from the Tea Party. But we think about New Hampshire as the state where, you know, it's the live free or die state independence vote in the primary. Is the Tea Party going to have an, an undue influence in the primary this time, a more conservative electorate, you think, looking at the uh, Republican field? Look, our, our primaries have always been conservative, uh, con oriented towards uh, giving support to conservative candidates. There's nothing new in that. Uh, it has always been that way. Uh, just look at the last round of primaries we had on, in, on the congressional and Senate side and the, and the candidates that, that, that won for places like the state Senate seats. Our primaries are always conservative. So whether they're labeled as Tea Party folks or not now, it's the same people who have always voted aggressively in our primaries. So uh, it's not going to be much different than it's ever been. And, Governor, I, I want to ask you about an, another candidate that you've weighed in on recently, John Huntsman. Uh, you've said that you'd work against him, that you consider him Ob an Obamaite uh, now and forever. First of all, it, is there a history here between you and Huntsman? It seemed like very strong words to come out against someone who is, hasn't even announced for candidacy yet. Well, I've never met him, but uh, I've, I've seen some of the positions he took. I think he's rather liberal on a number of positions. And as I said, New Hampshire is a conservative state, and and we're going to su support, and I will end up probably supporting a conservative candidate. One other person that, that in that same interview you didn't have particularly kind words for his chances was, was Newt Gingrich. W what do you think is going on uh, for Newt? Well, I, I just keep having run through my, my mind that uh, television ad of him sitting uh, with Nancy Pelosi on there trying to tell us that we we needed to have a carbon tax or some other kind of crazy legislation to deal with uh, with climate. I just uh, think it's p pretty clear that that's not a conservative position, that's not a Republican position, and uh, I think, I don't know what motivated him to go arm in arm with Nancy Pelosi, but I think that's a problem for him. Why would that be uh, dis disqualifying when, say, Mitt Romney's support for, for universal health care in Massachusetts wouldn't be? Well, Nancy Pelosi is Nancy Pelosi. Uh, states across the country, governors across the country, are trying to deal with, with health care issues. I don't fault the governor of Massachusetts for trying to, to put a package in place, which frankly was a package that came out uh, part and parcel from the Heritage Foundation, which is an extremely conservative group. So, so I think he made an effort 
trying to use the, as, as he said in his recent release, using the states as laboratories of democracy, it's easy to undo something in a state. It's not easy to do undo, undo something at the federal level. I think the important fact is, is that he's now committed, at least uh, very clearly committed, to using whatever powers he has as president to get rid of Obamacare. The important thing is uh, governors try to solve problems in their states. They don't always get to enact something that's perfect, but at least they get something started and it can be adjusted. Unfortunately, the adjustments the Democrats made to Romney care in Massachusetts, I think, made it a little less effective, not more effective. All right, John Sununu, the former governor of New Hampshire, we appreciate it. Always coming to bring it on politics. Always love that. Thanks so much.